And as the federal government and BP work to cap the flow of oil in the Gulf, questions now surround the safety technology used by the deep water drilling industry, such as these blowout preventers that are supposed to prevent accidents like this one from happening. Clean Skies' Dan Goldstein takes a look now at just how these devices may have failed and what it means for the future of the industry. We asked whether the blowout preventer used here was adequate to shut off any leak. Once the primary accident occurred, uh, why did not all of the various uh, uh, safety features in terms of blowout prevention uh, kick in? At the center of the investigation, the blowout preventer, or BOP, a device designed to work deep underwater at high pressures. It's supposed to slam shut a well using rams and shears to keep the oil and natural gas from surging up the pipe onto the platform. After the explosion, remote-controlled mini-subs tried to activate the rams deep underwater, but failed. BP found oil leaking from three separate pipe breaks. Cameron, the maker of the BOP, isn't talking. Neither is Transocean, which operated the rig. And there are also questions about the role of subcontractor Halliburton, in charge of cementing the well. Last week, Halliburton said it finished its work 20 hours ahead of the explosion, but said it did everything by the book. I think that it was a composite of several things. The BOP should have held. It did not. Um, I, I have no idea. It was tested, apparently, just before the accident, and it worked like a jewel. The accident happened as workers finished drilling and began capping the well for later production. This area, the Mississippi Canyon Block, was known for reservoirs of oil and natural gas under very high pressure, as much as 30,000 pounds per square inch. No room for error. 2,000 PSI uh, pressure can decapitate the man. Uh, 10,000 PSI, it will vaporize everybody inside. People are not complacent about pressure. Exactly what contributed to the blowout is unclear. The rig was supposed to drill down to 18,000 feet. But some workers now allege BP went beyond its permit to 20,000 feet, something the company denies. Another factor being considered, improperly cured cement lining the well, which could have allowed high-pressure gas and oil to burst up the pipe. Hardened drill bits passing through the BOP may have also prevented the device from closing in time to stop a blowout. Sizes of casing and certain sizes of what's called drill collars, the really heavy walled uh, drill pipe that are used near the bit, might be too much for the shears to be able to handle. Also being questioned, BP's overall safety record in the Gulf. Last week, we told you about an incident in 2002 where a BP rig was evacuated after a near blowout. The resulting fire caused more than $2 million damage. High level source with MMS, with direct knowledge of the incident, put it bluntly, saying, quote, they nearly burned down the whole rig. And Clean Skies News has now learned less than six months after the first incident, a near blowout happened again on the same rig. But BP was only fined $41,000 for both incidents where the other companies were fined more than half a million dollars. So far, the MMS has not responded to questions as to why BP's fines were so low. And the agency might also face more inquiries as to why it didn't require safety devices that are mandatory in other countries. That could include remote shutoff devices like these to activate the blowout preventer if the rig is evacuated. The Transocean Deepwater Horizon didn't have one. The industry says the price tag for these devices as much as a half million dollars each is too high and they don't always work. With 11 dead and BP on the hook for billions of dollars in cleanup costs, some experts say they're worth the price. If there's been good experience in other parts of the world with using essentially a remote switch, so this allows you to activate the device, you know, it's a good idea once the technology is proven. Despite MMS rules, Congress may soon decide those devices will now be required. If there was a decision that was made not to impose that additional uh, safeguard, then clearly uh, we are right now realizing shortchanging the costs uh, that have to be expended in order to make sure that these types of events don't occur ultimately results in these kinds of events. So we will have to get the answers to those questions. And some answers may never be known because the men in the best position to tell what happened that day were operating the rig and were among the 11 killed. The industry says the best way to honor the men lost is to make sure this never happens again. In Washington, Dan Goldstein, Clean Skies News.